What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, I choose to blame it on the virus panic. This happened to my neighbor, best friend, boss, BFF, and me today. A little background important to the story. We're both red-headed women, both work for the same law enforcement department, I generally work nights, she generally works days. We both were told to take today off after working three 36-hour shifts with only a few hours of sleep between because of dealing with panic from a certain virus that aside from a couple of travelers hasn't hit our area yet. Since we both needed stuff, BFF and I grab BFF's two offspring, Offspring 1 and Offspring 2, and head for a certain store that is a local chain that is something like a slimmed down Walmart. The uniform of their employees is black slacks, white polo, and an apron that varies by department. BFF is dressed in flats, casual pants, and a white button down over a cami and her vest. I'm in blue jeans, knee highs, boots, and a department t-shirt over my vest. In other words, nothing like store's uniform. Plus, we have, you know, belts with handcuffs, guns, and holsters. We're in the store for about half an hour, I'm pushing one cart, Offspring 1 is pushing the other, while BFF is holding Offspring 2 in one arm and pulling things off of the shelf with the other. Suddenly, we hear a loud crash and a scream in the next aisle. BFF passes Offspring 2 off to me, telling me to watch her, and heads over to the next aisle. She barely makes it around the corner when I hear her call for me. I set Offspring 2 down, tell her to wait with Offspring 1, and come around the corner. Here is the sight I see. One young woman, her head slightly bleeding, trying to free herself from the grasp of a crazy blonde lady, probably roughly in her late 30s to late 40s, while a man and a few kids look on. Crazy lady looks up at BFF and immediately goes, Oh good, are you the manager of this crappy store? This lazy bench refused to help me. I wanna fired. She then jerks the young woman so hard that the young woman runs into the shelves, cutting herself a second time. Ma'am, let her go. BFF states calmly, I don't think she works here. What do you mean you don't think she works here? Don't you know your own employees? What kind of crappy, dumbass freaking manager are you? BFF looks at me. I look at BFF, then look back at Crazy Lady, giving her my most wicked smile. I'd say she knows her employees pretty well, I remarked. However, that lady doesn't work for the store. She's not wearing the uniform. Tell your freaking security grunt to be silent! Crazy lady spouts off. Aunt Mama! One of the kids urgently starts. I don't think she's security! Shut up, Mako! Not real name. Can't you see Mama's talking to the manager? Ma'am, I'm not the manager. BFF says, pointing to the store manager who is now hurrying over. He is. Now let go of the girl. I won't ask again. She starts reaching for her handcuffs. Freaking lying... Kuda, you white folk benches are all the same, racist and sticking up for each other. Rather ironic considering that crazy lady was paler than I am, and that's saying something. At that moment, Offspring 2 came running around the corner. Hey, it's okay if I crazy lady finally let go of the terrified and injured girl, and then grabbed Offspring 2, flinging her halfway down the aisle. Stupid brat, wait your turn, you stupid little... Wham! Crazy Lady stopped talking as she ricocheted off shelves. Don't ever touch my daughter again! BFF told her as she tried to handcuff Crazy Lady. At this point, the man that had been standing with the kids tries to grab onto BFF and winds up taking a knee to the groin for his trouble. Crazy Lady takes advantage of the moment, pushes BFF off, grabs a jar off the shelf to swing towards BFF's head, and freezes as she realizes, I've drawn my weapon. Her eyes go wide. I'll, I'll call corporate and have you fired for this! She hissed. I guess Crazy Lady didn't see anything wrong with having a weapon herself and trying to use it. But somehow, someone else with a weapon stopping her from potentially killing someone else is a bad thing. Mama! The little boy screamed. I've been trying to tell you, they don't work here. The lady's a police, look at her shirt. 
She looked down at my shirt, and she definitely got that look people get when they realize they are in serious trouble. I wish I could say the fight left her then. Instead, as she was Mirandized, she kept insisting that she had done nothing wrong and that she was being entrapped by the police. After Crazy Lady and the man that tried to grab BFF were cuffed, given their rights, and sat on the floor, the manager helped me watch over the two while BFF went and checked on Offspring 2 while we waited on someone actually on duty and for medics to arrive. Entire thing took maybe 5 minutes from the time we heard the crash until the end. Another 10 for coworkers and medics to arrive. The young woman that was first assaulted had to go to the hospital to be checked out. Poor girl was really scared that she was going to catch something at that hospital. Offspring 2 had her arm broken and also had to go to the hospital. The man and kids turned out to be her boyfriend and their children. Crazy lady and boyfriend are now in jail for the foreseeable future since courts are closed. Crazy lady's kids are going to social services. Boyfriend was still in the process of applying for his green card. Now he probably can't get it and may be facing deportation at the end of all this. Since the injured girl, BFF, and I couldn't finish our shopping, the manager took our lists and promised that everything would be delivered to our houses tomorrow. Before anyone asks, we are not required to wear our vests off duty, but most of us do. As for why we have our guns and badges while shopping with kids, in our department, certain ranks are required to carry weapons, badges, and cuffs while off duty. Oh, and this whole thing apparently started because the store was out of toilet paper and crazy lady decided the girl stocking up on pickles must be an employee. Okay, so this white woman was claiming racism against white people and she's breaking bones and cutting people. What? And why did it take 15 minutes total for the co-workers to get there? What? This story's called, The Day I Was Hired and Fired from a Law Firm. Not sure if this one belongs here, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. So this is about five years ago. I worked as a chef at a bakery. It was my job to make everything but the baked goods. Every morning, the baker and I would walk in at about 4 a.m. and knock out all the food needed for the day. This would leave me ready to go home around 10 a.m. or so. This put us at the perfect time to deliver online orders. It was common for companies or other entities to place large catering orders with us. The baker and I would split them down the middle and deliver them on our way home. The delivery in question was for Bob, Dick, and Harry, attorneys at law. I have never delivered to BD&H before, but they were a regular of sorts. Every financial quarter, they would hold a huge meeting. This meeting would require roughly $700 worth of bagels and bagel accessories. This spread included eight dozen bagels, all ten of our flavors of cream cheese, pastries, brownies, and enough coffee to power a college dorm through finals week. My passenger seat, entire back seat, and entire trunk are filled with food. Now, BD&H is located on the ninth floor of a commercial skyscraper deep in an industrial complex downtown. Parking was non-existent. There were meters outside the building, but I knew I would need close to 10 trips to deliver all this food. And I didn't have a lot of change on me. Company policy was to just pay whatever fines I needed to park and then turn in my receipts. The money would end up on my next paycheck. So the building has its own parking garage, so I pull on in. The security guard, let's call him Sam, stops me and says that the parking garage is for employees only. I happily show him my delivery invoice and offer him a bribery bagel. Never leave the store without at least two. Sam refuses the bagel and says I can park in one of the guest spots on the bottom floor. The fee is $5 for every 30 minutes, minimum of $10. I thank him and head to the bottom floor of the garage. So there are a total of six guest parking spaces, just six. All of them are taken. I head back up to talk to Sam when I see an open parking spot reserved for Bob, Dick, and Harry, attorneys at law. There are cars in every spot, with many spots being reserved for employees by name. The last spot is empty and is reserved for guests of Bob, Dick, and Harry. Perfect. I pull on in, I grab the most important part of the delivery, the coffee, and head to the stairwell. 
I get into the elevator and hit the button for floor 9. The elevator asks for my employee ID card. Well, crud. I try the lobby. That works. From there, it's nine flights of stairs until I am outside the law firm of Bob, Dick, and Harry. After introducing myself, I am shown to the room where the meeting will take place. A table is set aside for me. I set down the coffee and head for trip number two. That is when I see Sam talking to the receptionist. He runs over and starts shouting at me. I'm putting a boot on your freaking car! I told you to park in the guest spot on the bottom floor! I don't get a word in before he launches into a speech about security and how I could be hurting his building or people. That is when a very well-dressed man walks over. It so happens to be Bob, the Bob of Bob, Dick, and Harry's. Bob asks what the problem is, and soon the two are arguing. OP is delivering food for my meeting. He is allowed to use my parking spots. Those parking spots belong to the building. You are leasing them like you lease this floor. I am the one who says who can park there. He isn't an employee, so he isn't parking. Then I'm making him an employee. You can't do that. You know what? You're right. Harry? Harry, get over here. Harry walks over with an amused look on his face. Harry here is the head of our HR department. Harry... Hire this boy. Harry pulls out a piece of paper and scribbles, OP is now a member of Bob, Dick, and Harry's, and signs it, then asks me to sign as well. I do so. Bob reaches over to the receptionist, who is already grabbing some things. Here's your employee badge, your parking permit, and your elevator keycard. Now please, do the job I have hired you to do, and deliver my bagels. Sam looks on in utter fury as I ride the elevator down to my car. Seven sweet, sweet elevator rides later, all the food is delivered. Bob and Harry meet me at the table. OP, you have made great strides in this company and I am proud of your work. But I feel it is time for us to part these. Here is your final check. Bob then hands me a crisp $50 bill. And your severance package? Now please be sure to return your badge and card on the way out. Harry hands me a $20 bill and sends me on my way. The receptionist is sure to validate the parking ticket that Sam gave me and I head on out. On the way out, Sam grins at me and asks for my ticket. I place it in the machine in his station. It sees the validation I got and lets me out for free. Sam glares at me as I drive off into the late morning sun. Sam, the, the parking guy, is obviously not very happy with the work he chose because, gosh, can you be any more of a freaking uh, urethra splinter? Jeez. This story's called, Today I Fudged Up by Dismissing My Uneasy Bowel on a Fourth Date. So this happened December 2016, Boxing Day. I was dating a girl, let's call her Mary, and things were looking pretty good. We had a lot of fun together and had some very successful dates. Ooh. Christmas was coming up and we both had no plans for Boxing Day, so I decided to invite her over for dinner. We both love cooking, so we did the cooking together. Glass of wine, good talks, good fun. It was lovely. With three courses and accompanying wines, the kitchen time between courses, time was going fast. It turned out to be a heavy meal, not to mention the wine. We were getting drowsy and not exactly in the mood for extended good times in bed. So I came up with the idea to go for a walk. It was cold outside, so that would freshen us right up for business. Or so I thought. Just before leaving the house, I feel my bowels twitch, or whatever you call it. They were uneasy, and you know, no wonder. We had our shoes and coats on already, still talking away. So, you know, I just dismissed it. It's not the time to say, hey, hold on, I probably really have to take a dump right now. And besides that, mine was a tiny apartment at that time, and the toilet was right next to the door, so there would be no pretending. It's a split second, I didn't even consciously decide not to go to the toilet. Bowel twitches, toilet is complicated, let's go outside. So I was planning to do a couple kilometer routes around the neighborhood. 
She wasn't very familiar with my town yet, so I had some nice buildings and streets in mind to show her. Fast forward 45 minutes, all is well. Or maybe three quarters of the way in. A short climb was coming up. Some stairs followed by a steep section of street. Maybe a hundred meters. We're not even halfway up the steps, and my bowel graciously announces its existence again. He was luckily silent, but all the more ominous for it. You know that feeling like everything from your chest down to your crotch is liquid? That. It went as quick as it came, but I knew. It's time to go home. Home was about 15 minutes off. Should be good. We continue. Mary's talking, and talking, and talking, and my bowels have reintroduced themselves. I managed to casually mention that we have to go home because my stomach is weird. She responds in a casual, joking, and de-escalating way. Thank you, Mary. Of course, yeah, no worries. Sure, I'll manage. <laughs> she keeps on chatting away. Time crawls. We seem to make zero progress towards the toilet. I assess the situation and decide I will not accept the prognosis I made. Luckily, I still manage to listen and understand a bit and acknowledge and, hmm, in the right places. But I feel alone and afraid. There's this non-stop pressure in my body trying to push something wet and ghastly outside. My sphincter is working hard. Cold sweats. Ears start to ring. What the hell is happening? I blurt out, Mary, stop. I know this is weird, but please don't think less of me, but I feel like I'm about to crap my pants. She gives me an uncertain look and asks if I'm serious. Yes, I'm serious. It's bad. And I double over while I feel that I'm going to have to give in. I look around and assess. Thank God for Christmas, there are no people around. Parked cars in a patch of grass with a large tree. There, it will happen. Mary, could you please stand behind that van? It's happening. And so, I waddle towards the tree while I feel my arse losing the battle. Strange sensations in my underwear. Relief, panic, and shame all mixed together. I hurriedly take off my pants and let go fully. Yes! Are you alright? I hear from behind the van. Um, yeah. Better than before, anyway. Please, stay there for a while, love. I decide to use the clean part of my underwear to clean my body a bit, and so I step out of my pants and go to work. Pants are luckily okay. I look at the mess I made. It's horrendous. And hell, I'm not dragging my muddy underpants along for the rest of the way back. I left them there. A Christmas monument to misery. A treat for the neighborhood dogs that would undoubtedly find it later. I don't know, but somehow it was even too much to face the monstrosity and take it to a bin somewhere. I just wanted to go ASAP, so we went. It's not long after that that I decided she was a stayer. She was better about it than I could imagine anyone ever being able to be about something like this. And then on to me. Bonus screw up. Some 10 minutes later, we arrive home and I quickly jump in the shower. Turns out, the inside of my pants didn't escape unscathed. So I grab them and use the shower to remove as much evidence as possible. I clean up, toss my pants in the laundry, turn the machine on, put on something comfortable, and we proceed to have some tea on the couch. I suddenly hear this weird rhythmic thumping noise. My hand shoots towards my pockets. Crap! My phone is in the machine. Ended up being a solid base of trust and confidence in her, and several good laughs about it since. We're together quite happily, still. Thank you for reading, let it be a lesson for all. You know what? Given that, uh, another popular story on, on this, uh, subreddit is that story of the guy who was running in the morning, and he ended up, like, really crapping his pants. Like, really, <laughs> really crapping his pants. <laughs> oh, man. However, you were on a date. That guy was already married, so he doesn't have much to lose there. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.